Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and apparently it is ECS, or Entity Component System Week, here on Game From Scratch. Earlier on, we talked about Flex, uh, and today we are talking about XE. Uh, XE is a newly announced uh, Entity Component System framework for the web. And this is made by Mozilla, specifically Mozilla's uh, Mixed VR team, the people behind the A-Frame library. So let us jump in, take a quick look at what XE is all about. Once again, I'm going to do a follow-up video about uh, what ECS actually is and the strengths and merits of doing it. So I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail about those things, but they actually did a pretty good job of covering the what and why of how of all of it works here in this blog post. So eh. also I will link everything down below. So if you're interested in learning more about anything that we've got up on screen, don't worry, I will have links to it. So today we are checking out Etsy, actually literally pronounced Etsy, um, very close to Etsy for my liking. But anyways, uh, this is also a highly experimental entity component system. So that probably means it is not quite ready for prime time. Now, the biggest reason why they went about making this thing is because they make a framework called A-Frame, which they use for doing um, VR. Basically, it's like HTML for VR. I guess you can think of it that way. I did a video on it in the past. I'll link that down below as well if you're interested in learning more. Um, it provides a nice component-based architecture, but it has one major problem. It's so strongly tied to the underlying rendering system, 3JS, they might as well just be one thing. They've got no ability to make that change there. So they've kind of been looking at it. They've been looking at various different game engines out there, like what Unity is doing right now, um, and have decided to move away from the whole um, object-oriented approach like you see in Mono Behavior or their existing A-Frame component system, and instead focusing on an ECS support. So here's how ECS theoretically slots into your web application. You can use ECS on its own. You can use ECS with the DOM, you can use ECS with Canvas, you can use ECS with WebGL, or you can slot in a game engine like 3JS, Babylon, uh, Phaser, Pixie, Processing, and so on. The cool thing is they've actually done uh, examples for various different platforms. We'll see that in just a second. So here they broke down to uh, the data-oriented architecture and where ECS comes about things. So there's a couple things that they define that aren't generally defined, such as queries. And for some reason, I'm pretty sure that components are supposed to be a bulleted item in this list, uh, and it isn't. So we'll, we'll look at each one in turn. So you've got entities. An entity is basically a unique ID, way of identifying uh, a thing in the world, but mostly it's there to hold components. Uh, people say don't call entities component bags, but yeah, that's what they are. They're a, a, like an array of components and an entity ID, and that's generally about it. Now components themselves, this is where the data is, and just data. You don't put any logic in there, you just put things like, um, so like for example, if using hit points, you would put your your hit points in there, so in hit point, um, and maybe other attributes around hit points, or, or you do health, and where you have hit points and uh, status like poisoned and so on, but you wouldn't put the logic in there to change the hit points or to um, you know check if someone's poisoned and heal them and so on. That would go somewhere else, and that somewhere else is systems. You can almost think of the word system as an analog for function. This is the stuff that operates on components. Now, the nice thing is about abstracting these things away, this means you can reuse components between different entities. So completely unrelated entity, uh, entity of Bob, an entity of Bill, an entity of Duck can all use the same components. And those components are worked on by systems. So those systems don't care about what components they are other than the requirements they have. And the components don't care what's being done to them by systems or what entities they're in. So it creates this nice reusability and it decouples responsibility between these various different layers. However, you're going to have some layers of requirements. So for example, a system that works on hit points is going to need to have hit point data, for example, and it might need to actually have a couple of different components. Well, that is where a query comes in. A query is used by systems to determine which entities they are interested in based on the components the entity owns. Um, and then finally, you have the world. That one's pretty self-explanatory. The world is everything. So here you can see an example. You have an entity. An entity has multiple components. You have multiple entities in the world. Um, entities use queries to run through systems. And then system, all right, now this graph kind of starts to suck. But systems work on components, and the component data comes from the components attached to entities. So that's kind of the, the basic idea behind it. So uh, they've used a couple of examples here, real world examples, and I like the fact that they do this. So you see it color coded. The yellow bit is the entity. So we've created an entity called box. The box has components of type shape, position, velocity, and renderable. Pretty straightforward. So see, you've got two completely separate entities here, but they use the same. Um, 
the same set of components here. Now you could have another one that had nothing to do with geometry that could still have a position. So you could also have GOAT and GOAT could have a position and velocity. That's the nice thing about the components. They're very reusable. And then now here you see the system. So we have a movable system or a render system and there's where the query comes in. So you need to have query. This, so movable system checks for any components or any entities that have the components of position and velocity. So we'll go through and grab all of the things that match. So both of these would match. So you see, we get a match here. And then what it will do then is the movable system will apply on all compatible um, entities that flag back. So the components and all the entities that match the query that was put out will now be moved. Ditto for rendering. So anything that has renderable and shape will be shown in this list. So basically think of this as like a for each list. So you say for each renderable and shape component that, that you match both of those conditions, then we're going to run the execute code from the render system. And here you can see the end result of it. We can go look at that source code in a bit, but we'll get back to that in just a second. So here is their, actually they've done the source code in line, which is kind of nice. So your components are very, very straightforward. They're literally just data. So you got a constructor where, which is doing initial allocations and that's it. So we got all of these three being defined. And then finally we have uh, renderable as a component, which is pretty much just empty. Um, and down here, we've got uh, to uh, implement the two systems for our example. So these are kind of like functions. Uh, so this is going to execute, and then you're going to pass into parameters the the delta and the uh, the time. I'm kind of curious why you'd have time. But anyways, see how I said it? it's like a loop. Well, here you're going go the queries, moving results for each. So you're literally looking for all of the movings. And then for each one of them, you're going to go through and basically move everything. So like I said, when I used a for each example, that is quite literal in this particular case. Uh, here for the movable system, you're defining the queries. These are the, the uh, requirement matchings for the query named moving. Like we saw, we, ac we accessed it right here, queries moving. And then the result is the result of this particular query. So we're creating queries dot moving. And we're saying we require the component velocity and we require the component position. And then down here, we have another one. This is the render system. And it's also got its query. It requires renderable and shape. And once again, you get everything that fits in that query in the renderables. We loop through all of them and basically render each thing as relevant. So once you see you've got this dependency here, so we can actually get a reference to the component type. So we can get a reference to shape and position uh, because we define that those are uh, requirements to be um, this part of component like uh, of this um, entity type or uh, this query type. Um, we have some entities, random positions, da, 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 and then the update each frame, pretty straightforward. Here you see, uh, let's see what's going on, updating the time, and then you call into the world function itself and execute it. And this is basically your game loop is the world, and that's what's managing everything. It's the top level control object. Now there are a couple of nice things out here. Um, you can use XE directly with whichever 2D or 3D game engine you are already used to. So they've got examples for Babylon JS, 3JS, and 2D Canvas. Focus on providing a simple yet efficient API designed to avoid garbage collection as much as possible. And that is what causes like <clears throat> slowdowns on managed systems. So that is a good move. Uh, system entities and components are scoped in the world in a world instance. It means we don't have to register the components or systems on a global scope, allowing you to have multiple worlds. So that's kind of nice. You can actually create two world objects. So if you had like, I don't know, a split screen with completely separate things happening, you could have a separate world for each one. Um, or you could have like a four player co-op game all running on the same screen, each with their own worlds. Um, multiple queries per system, reactive support, systems can change, um, can react to changes in entities and components. So this is basically kind of like the uh, in the other system. When something, you can have it trigger, uh, a system be run based off a trigger. So if you had like say hit points, if someone changed a hit point value, you could have that fire off a system. So it's kind of like um, on update or on change handlers from any kind of normal system or what you'd normally call like say a delegate. Uh, predictable systems will always run in the order that they are registered or based on a priority attribute. Reactive events won't generate random callback functions when emitted. Instead, they will be queued and processed in order when the listener systems are executed. This is kind of them talking about some of the, the quirkiness of JavaScript that they've managed to uh, kind of smooth out a bit. And then in the future, they're adding some uh, syntactic sugar, creating better developer tools, XC3, so 3JS implementation coming up, decorative layer, more examples, more APIs, WebGL engines like 3JS, Babylon, et cetera, uh, improved performance, um, 
with some WebAssembly built in there. Again, Wasm, uh, we tried to keep the implementation part of the core or some systems on Wasm to take advantage of strict memory layouts and parallelism offered by Wasm threads. Um, and web workers, we're working on an example to show you how you can move systems to a worker and run them in parallels. That's a lot like the um, job system idea from the Unity game engine. So anyways, that is essentially it. That's XE. Um, it's a pretty clean implementation. It's again, it's very, very early. So don't know that I would base my uh, game around it, but I like that it's en game engine agnostic. And it gives you a pretty good foundational place to work from if you want to work with ECS. Plus, they've also done a very good job of explaining what can be a somewhat complicated subject in very simple terms. So if you're interested, they have one of the most Spartan websites I have ever seen. It is available at xc.io. Um, there is well documentation. As I mentioned earlier on, there are a number of examples, but what we are interested in is GitHub. Here we are. We are in the GitHub. Most important things here is the license. It is under the MIT license, which is no shock. This is Mozilla. Pretty much everything they do is completely in the open. Um, yeah, so got a bit more of the details that we're working with here, but you can see here they've got a number of examples. So we've got 3JS example for, uh, this is a Balls example. We have Babylon JS implementation example, an example for 2D canvases, a factory, uh, factory pattern example, and a state component example. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Babylon example for huh, example. And here we go. So that is not the, actually it's not running terrible. But uh, if you're interested, the source code is actually available. So you head on up here, you go to examples, for example, uh, and then you'll find all of the various different things. So there's the box one we just saw, the factory and so on. So you want to do the 2D, the 2D canvas example, here it is. And nicely, they've also broke this up so it's very easy to understand. So the components go in component. So you see here, you got a movement, a circle, uh, canvas can context, demo and intersecting component. And then your systems are in da, 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 systems. So here you got a move system uh, and an intersection system and a rendering system. Pretty straightforward. And then over in, I think here, you should have, yeah, this is where the main is. So this is where your world, this is your main loop right there. So function update, this one's called every time, update the performance, world new, and then basically do a, a callback in uh, X amount of time. Uh, so that is it. That is XE, another um, ECS system. This one happens to be from Mozilla and for the web. I like that it's game engine agnostic. That, that is definitely a cool thing. Um, their implementation is pretty straightforward. Once again, this is very early and experimental, so who knows where it'll go. Uh, but if you are looking for the foundations of an entity component system for a web-based project, could be a good choice. I like that it's not coupled to anything, and I think this is a good move for them to, instead of, uh, I did always find A-Frame was really tied to 3JS, and it's kind of cool that this, this is going to be abstracting that away. All right, so that's XE. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.